Welcome to Study Life. In this section on mechanical properties of solids, we are going to work on modulus of rigidity. Let's reverse our time phase and let's go back to Hooke's law. What did Hooke's law say? Hooke's law says stress is directly proportional to strain. That means you increase the value of stress, the strain also increases. You decrease the amount of strains, stress, the strain decreases. In this scenario, where stress was directly proportional to strain, there was a constant called as modulus of elasticity, which had three variations, Young's modulus, bulk modulus, and modulus of rigidity. In the, today's video, we're going to focus on modulus of rigidity in detail. In order to understand this, let's take the help of a diagram. In this diagram, I understand that initially this was just a square or a rectangular face. All I did was apply some tangential force on it. The very moment I applied some tangential force, the shape changed. Important is the shape should change. In here, we do not focus on length or the area or volume. All that we focus on is the shape change. If there's a change in the shape, this comes into action. What happens is initially this was a rectangular thing. Now due to tangential force, it has now converted itself into a parallelogram. I understand that in here, there is some tiny extension. This extension, let me just call it as X. This happens to be the height of this column. So that is H. The value of H never changes, but the extension might change depending upon the number of the amount of tangential force. Let's start working on the expressions that we need to find out modulus of rigidity. The very first is shearing stress. We have learned in our previous sessions that shearing stress is again force acting per unit area. Very simple, very easy. Mark it down as equation number one. Let me add another thing. It's called as shearing strain. What is shearing strain? It's change in dimension divided by the original dimension. What is my change in dimension? X. Because this is the extension that, is, that can be observed. What is the original dimension? H, because this is something that is fixed. Therefore, shearing strain becomes X divided by H. If ever I consider an angle theta over there and I describe tan theta, what, is, what should be tan theta? Tan theta should be opposite divided by the adjacent. Therefore, it is also expressed as X by H. So can I just tame it as tan theta? And if theta is small, tan theta will be same as theta and will also be same as sin theta. So can I just write it as this? This happens to be my second equation. So I have shearing strain, I have shearing strain, I have shearing stress. Now I want to calculate modulus of rigidity. Modulus of rigidity is expressed as eta and this is a ratio of them. So let me just write it down. F divided by A divided by X upon H. This can also be expressed as F upon A. For shearing strain, let me just add a theta in here. And this works really well. This is my modulus of rigidity. Modulus of rigidity is also a type of modulus of elasticity. That means the units and dimensions for modulus of elasticity is same as modulus of rigidity. What happens to be the unit? Remember, the unit is Newton per meter square in SI system, whereas in CJ system, it is dyne per centimeter square. What should be the dimension for this? Same as modulus of elasticity. What is it? It is m to the power 1, l to the power minus 1, t to the power minus 2. Make sure you use the square brackets to represent dimensions. That was all that we had to work on modulus of rigidity. We are hoping that you people will stay with me in our next session. Until then, stay tuned with Study Life and keep learning with me. Thank you. Mm -hmm.